damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 329. We're now in the final week of February, February of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and still the only wrestling podcast. So we have uh, the Elimination Chamber fallout from WWE to discuss. They uh, they beat Sami Zayn. We have some New Japan Pro Wrestling news to chat about. Uh, Mercedes Monet won the women's title. Jay White is leaving the company. And AEW, back over a million viewers this week. Everything is going very well. Why do you ask? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the important thing is, and we'll get to the AEW stuff. Everyone loves ratings talk. Um Everyone loves ratings talk, but uh, you know, what's important I think for AEW just off the bat is that they need to do what I like, what I personally like more. And they need to do what I don't personally like less. And that will keep them over a million viewers, uh, viewers permanently. Uh, Yeah. That's the strategy that seems to be uh, always suggested by uh, the wrestling, the wrestling Twitter (laughs) pundits. It's just, well, if you do more of what I personally like, clearly that's why they were over a million this week as if there is, any sort of real pattern to be gleamed other than maybe it's just because the NBA wasn't on last night or whatever. <laughs> right. Tell you what, every time Renee Paquette is dressed up as Marilyn Monroe, they're over a million viewers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that in a thousand with that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So WWE Elimination Chamber, all this feels like it's week old news at this point, but that's kind of what we do here. So, <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns beat Sami Zayn. Did you like the match? Did you like how they did it? Did you like the follow up? Um, I thought the match the match was good because of the crowd. Um, I am not the biggest fan of the Roman Reigns walk and talk and squeeze uh, sure. package, but complaining about what? that feels <laughs> like complaining about Roman Reigns world title matches feels a little bit like complaining about camera cuts or you know weird WWE verbiage it's just it's just what it is there's not <laughs> it's not changing uh personally and it kind of we we talked about this a little bit off the air uh I was kind of hoping cuz considering that we were all pretty sure that Sammy wasn't going to win um I thought maybe maybe Roman could have tapped into like a Harley race or a uh, or a Ric Flair style of match and just, you know, let Sammy get 99% of the offense and just sell and sell and sell. And and then at the end, you know, he ekes out the victory. Um, that's maybe what I would have done, maybe. But, uh, you know, as it was, it was an incredible crowd, a crowd that... Um, was silent as soon as Roman won and then didn't get nearly as loud as they were <laughs> again uh, for the rest of the evening, even with all of the post-match uh, gaga with, with Kevin Owens and, and all of that. So um, I guess I expected more. We talked about on the show last week. I think I was expecting a bigger shove in the direction of the Usos, Sammy and Kevin match. And yes. we got a little bit of that where Jay comes down and is still conflicted. And then Sammy accidentally hits him and, and that kind of le- led to the finish. But you were expecting like the big dramatic turn because as of now, it still feels like Sammy should be going back after uh, Roman. And again, there's time they can, they can, get get the heat back on the Usos, I suppose, theoretically. But as of now, it's like Sammy was the hottest thing going coming into this show. Then he was in front of his hometown crowd and was over like very few people have ever been over in a building <laughs> in, yes. in modern wrestling, at least. And uh, and then they just beat him. And then he wrestled Baron Corbin the next night. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously we have a direction. They're kind of 
from a logical storytelling perspective, I would give them credit here. Kevin Owens is not suddenly want to be Sammy's best friend again because Sammy screwed him over 500 times over the last few months and only really, you know, turned turned over a new leaf at the very last second. Um, so they're kind of doing a slow burn to KO and Sammy getting back on the same term. I don't, I don't hate any of this in a bubble, but at the same time, look well listening to the reaction that Sammy got, and I know they were in his hometown, but he's been getting big reactions everywhere. It's hard to feel like coming out of this show that Cody Rhodes winning the belt at Mania or Drew or Braun Breaker or whoever the mythical person that's going to break this Roman Reigns title reign is uh, like that any of them would be a better moment for a company that's all about the moment uh, that any of anybody else beating Roman over the next month or six months or year will feel as good as it would have felt to watch Sami Zayn beat Roman Reigns in his hometown. So even though you can argue it's a better story or, or you can, and all of that. And like I said, I don't think the fans are going to turn on, on Cody or the match, but I would just say personally, it's it's hard to imagine the payoff now as being at having the stars aligned as perfectly as it was for Sammy winning the belt in his hometown when he's the most over he's ever been in his career and maybe the most over anyone's ever been in Montreal. Um, it's yeah, it, it just feels like maybe we're going to look at it and go, hey, Cody winning the belt was still great, but, uh, you know, maybe not as great as it would have been if they just pulled the trigger on Sammy, you know? I think that's a fair perspective. A um, lot of scuttlebutt. The WWE is concerned about Cody's reactions going forward. Uh, Cody was still over like Rover on Raw on Monday. Mm-hmm. People are uh, robots and love to do the whoa in his song. Mm-hmm. And um, people seem to like him because he's polite and rarely late. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't know why exactly they're worried about that. Um, this uh, everyone who would who would actually write or try to hijack a show, uh, stopped watching about six years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, we yeah, we've touched on that the last couple of weeks, but yeah, I just I don't think that's a uh something they really need to worry about because again, if it was going to happen, they were still in. I mean, they were in Ottawa, they weren't in Montreal again on Monday, but. They were still in Canada on Monday and there was, as you said, there was no noticeable or audible contingent of fans who are mad, much less like the whole crowd turning against him. So, yeah, I don't I don't think they're, they're worried about that. I yeah, I think people like Cody just fine. I just think maybe, you know, they might they might like Sammy more right now. But hey, you've got six weeks or whatever to. Act, probably less than that now, but um, you've got some time to to make this Cody Roman uh, feud feel a little bit hotter going into the show and um they they did a segment with Paul Heyman which is I guess because I guess that was maybe the the argument being that Cody's quest has solely been about the belt whereas Sammy's was a a personal grudge and as yes. you know, as every old timer with the podcast will tell you personal issues draw are what draw the money uh, especially in right. an era where belts don't mean anything. Um, right. So I think that's also part of it. So, hey, you have you have time to make this a personal issue between between Cody and Roman. And they already kind of started that with the Paul Heyman stuff on Monday. So yeah, maybe they'll get there. Well, um, it, if I can interject, I'd just like to say that uh, as good as the first Paul and Cody segment was, that's how bad the second one was, <laughs> where Paul insinuated that he was going to try to make sex with Cody's wife mm-hmm. while he was on road as WWE champion, as Paul was in a neck brace uh, backstage. Um, it was it was absolute dog s. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I didn't think it was great. I just. It's it's something though, right? They're they're trying something here because yeah, 
as of now, I mean, the personal side of it for Cody is he's winning the belt his dad never won. Um, but for Roman, it's just kind of a match. So I guess they, like I said, they got some time to to try to heat this up. But um, and in the meantime, people are still into Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, and they'll be excited when they do finally team up to fight the Usos. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but yes, it does not feel like Cody now beating Roman a month out from this incredible environment with Sammy will feel anywhere near as special if in fact he does beat Roman. What if we go with uh, Kevin and uh, Solo against Jay and Sammy instead of uh, the match that uh, makes sense? <laughs> I mean, now you're really thinking. You're really thinking like a 1999 Booker. <laughs> you're really sure inside the box here. Um, they could definitely ruin it. <laughs> they still have the. They still have the chance. They still have it within them. I think to to ruin this in the next few weeks and make people care less. But but uh, as of now, I think the pieces are all still there for a pretty fun mania show or shows. Uh, but. Maybe there should have been, yeah, maybe we should have called an audible. Maybe, And again, hindsight will be the answer here as it is with everything. But, you know, sometimes, as we've said before, sometimes even when you don't think it is, even when last week on the show, I don't necessarily think think that we were advocating for Sammy winning the belt, or at least I wasn't. Um, sometimes you'd get there and, hey, it turns out the right time is just the right time. And... <laughs> whatever you had planned isn't going to be as good as what you, you know, when you had that lightning in a bottle for, for a single night and, you, and all the stars aligned and all the other cliches. Uh, I've never advocated for Sammy winning the title and I still am not advocating for <laughs> that. Sammy should have won the title. I think they made the right decision, but we'll see there. Uh, Oscar is going to face Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. That was at the colossal tussle. That was the other <laughs> uh, item that was decided at the uh, Elimination Chamber show. And uh, I was surprised because apparently I'm an idiot because Asuka was uh, pretty heavily favored. And I thought, well, they're going to go with uh, Raquel Rodriguez here. And uh, they did not. They went with Asuka. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about that on the show last week. I thought Asuka would have been my pick, but yeah, I mean, as we said, Raquel Raquel's gonna happen, <laughs> whether yeah. whether whether we want it to or not. So um, I don't know. Maybe they they just think she she needs a little bit more seasoning. I don't I don't feel like she has dramatically improved or regressed since coming to the main roster. Other than they make her smile like the Joker all the time. Um, Here, here's what we've learned: they <laughs> told they told her to smile a lot. They told her to uh, lose a lot of muscle, and then that it was okay to gain a lot of muscle back. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a third point here, and I forget what it was. But uh, she is way better as a heel. But yeah. uh, they they are pretty insistent on making this a baby face thing. Yeah, so I mean, I I don't know. It's not like SmackDown is is, <laughs> is littered with top baby faces, top likable baby faces at the moment. I mean, That's you have fair. you have live on that show, but other than that, so like, sure, you can you can try, but as of now, I don't know. It seems like maybe the tag champions, the women's tag champions, will be involved in something involving Becky and Lita and maybe Trish Stratus. We can talk about that in a minute. Um, but so I don't usually, that's usually the spot where all of the women who aren't in the singles title match go on WrestleMania. They just throw them all in makeshift tag teams and have them, have them have a six minute match on one of the nights. Um, so sure. with, with the, I guess they could do a battle Royal again or something this year. I don't know, but it's just, yeah, there's not an obvious get everybody on the show match for, uh, for the rest of these women who aren't, aren't in a title match this year. So my close personal friend, uh, Lita and uh, Becky are challenging for the tag team titles on Raw this coming Monday. And uh, they were in Canada and Trish Stratus either flew one hour or drove four and a half hours to go to the show. 
and then uh, they didn't put her on the show <laughs> because of uh, a quote unquote creative change, according to Fightful. Mm-hmm. So here's my takeaway from that is uh, Trish is going to cost Lita and Becky the titles. <laughs> Trish and Bailey are going to team up against uh, Lita and Becky. And uh, then the uh, damage control tag team will uh, go fight uh, Ronda and Shayna. That is a fascinating. <laughs> That's a fascinating scenario. Like I, yeah, I didn't have a strong feel for this after because it seemed like you would just do the the six the six woman tag. Um, yeah, and that would be yeah, they could, and that they would could be do a big that deal. Too. But to your point. Hey, if you take those tag champions out of that match, then there's your get everybody on the show match we were just talking about. So that yep. that, that does that does put some pieces on on the board in 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 an order that they tend to like. So Trish being a heel at this point is I mean, I'm not like she was a good heel in, in her day, but like does anybody want to be 17 Trish? years ago? Right. No. No. I mean, she'd really have to heal on the people. I, I I I don't think it's what I would do, but mm-hmm. um, I think maybe it's what they're doing. I don't know. We'll find out. This isn't like um, uh, uh, Vince's WrestleMania season booking, which is super predictable. You know, clearly Vince not. Is... Let's be talking about the Brock match in a second. <laughs> yeah. So Brock and Bob Lashley, they did a bad match with a bad finish, <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, Bray Wyatt said he's going to fight the winner of that match. And then uh, Bob Lashley won that match. So uh, I think Brock threw the match just so he wouldn't have to <laughs> be involved in a program with Bray Wyatt. And then, oh, the rib on him. Uh, Omos has challenged Brock to a WrestleMania match. So uh, I'm not still not sure what's going on with uh, Brock Lesnar and WrestleMania and Bobby Lashley and Omas and uh, Bray Wyatt, but uh, we have a month to tell some stories here, but uh, Brock Lesnar and Omas, I know it's something you're salivating over. Oh, the World Wrestling Federation is back, my friends. Like, this is this is it. You want to talk about a sign that maybe Vince McMahon is back. <laughs> the only sign, uh, the only thing I'm shocked about is that this is happening at WrestleMania and not a Saudi show. Because boy, does this seem like it should be on a on a... <laughs> on a Saudi pay-per-view, but uh, no, like I feel like we're overdue for a Brock uh, versus little work rate guy match. So I would personally like to see him work. I don't know. Could have put him against Balor again or something, but, uh, but yeah, he's going to wrestle another big lug who he has to herk up for every, for all of his move. Cause all he does is German suplexes and F fives. So he's going to have to wrestle another guy where he's going to have to do 98% of the, of the work. So uh, this will be a real, uh, a real good testament to how good of a worker Brock still is, which I think he still is uh, a very good worker, mm. but, but it's been a while since he's had to like, there was that, that it's stretch, been years. Yeah. There, <laughs> well, there was that stretch where he was working with like Braun and Kane every month for a while. Um, and yeah. those were not good but I didn't blame Brock for those. No. But, th- but then he had his great little stretch of work rate matches with Danielson and AJ. And, and uh, so it's like, okay, Brock can still go, but maybe it's better to put Brock against smaller guys that can do that. He can throw around with ease and that, that can create all of the movement for the match. Um, as opposed to Brock having to sell for a guy who's bigger than him a bunch. And then, also create all of the movement and then when it's time for the guy to go up he's 400 pounds and he's tired because the match has been going for three minutes and so now you have to (laughs) now he dead weights you on all the suplexes and you're dropping him on his neck over and over again um so i think it will be an experience for sure (laughs) so i am perversely perhaps excited for for brock versus omas for sure all right. Any other WWE stuff you want to touch on before we move on to uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling here? No, I mean, you know, my condolences to Bob Lashley for having to wrestle Bray, as it appears. But uh, yeah, bizarre, bizarre decision to end that Brock and Bob match and not do a rematch at WrestleMania. But 
I guess they're not doing that. Or maybe they are. There's just a lot of stories to be told over the next month here. New Japan Pro Wrestling had their uh, United States pay-per-view battle in Jim Valley uh, this past Saturday night. And the show, the start of the main card was delayed by 43 minutes because (laughs) Fight TV is an absolute dog s service and has been for years and uh will continue to be apparently uh, i've never had a good viewing experience on fight tv i think they suck and um yeah but that aside uh okada and tanahashi went on last as we thought they would mm-hmm. and uh mercedes and Kyrie went on next to last and um it was a good match that apparently was a great match live, but you would not know that because uh, the production on the show was terrible. Um, I don't know. I was a little disappointed, underwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't a bad match by any stretch, but what did you think of the women's title match there with uh, Mercedes making her debut and uh, Kyrie? Uh, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a good, solid effort. <laughs> Um, yeah, if, maybe if the crowd had been mic'd better, um, cause yeah, all the reports from the building were that people were going crazy. Bailey was leading chance in the crowd. <laughs> um, man, get you, get you a right yeah. die like Pam. Uh, you know what? Just. <laughs> we should all be so lucky as I have a friend like Pam. 100%. But, uh, but yeah, like the match itself, like they like everything they did in the match was good, you know, and, and made sense. And it was a really well worked match. And I thought they had good intensity. But yeah, it was a lot of them, like especially the middle part of the match where they're doing mat work and stuff. And Bailey's working over her shoulder and arm and all that. Just, Bailey? I mean, Bailey. But uh, uh, Mercedes is uh, is working <laughs> over the the arm or whatever. It's just it's just it was just like you could hear a pin drop. And again, maybe that's not true. And it's just fight or or New Japan or whoever whoever was responsible for miking the crowd uh, did a did a terrible job because you could hear them like they came alive on the table spot and once they started doing near falls and things at the end you could hear them but uh, yeah overall I thought it was it was pretty good it was a nice moment it seemed like it meant a lot to both Kyrie and Mercedes and and uh, yeah it was it was good but it certainly was not a classic. It's not a match that I think will get, get talked about as like a, a big match of the year contender or anything. But uh, I guess, yeah, I think the, maybe the most exciting part of that other than just she's here and she won the belt is probably the end of the show after Okada retained over Tanahashi uh, when she came out to, uh, to maybe I guess tease that they're going to do another maybe another new Japan stardom joint show and that she and Okada are going to be a team on that show. Like that'll be great. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. She, uh, she, uh, Okada was doing his, how was new Japan pro wrestling uh, (laughs) English promo that he does after every show in the United States. And Mercedes came out and I was like, Oh, she's going to challenge him. (laughs) It's like now. So, (laughs) It's like now we're, uh, you know, just going to be the IWGP champion. And it's like, oh, actually, no, they're just going to team up. It's like, oh, okay. And uh, Mercedes and Kenny also uh, doing some social media banter and teasing, uh, teaming up at some point. So, um, hey, if uh, Mercedes is going to be on the April card in D.C., maybe you guys should announce it. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. I, um, I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. That's just that's not how they do things. They're uh, they're playing 4D chess. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's just interesting because as we've talked about, their their business model for some reason is still based on like ticket sales, which is why they yes. run a thousand events every year uh, in in Japan yes. and abroad, and yet they wait until five days before the shows are announced. And, <laughs> to announce who's going to be there and what the matches are. Yes. It's very inexcusable. 
Um, Okada and Tanahashi had probably the second worst Okada Tanahashi match ever, <laughs> and it was still like three and three quarter or four stars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> It was yeah, like, I was like we, we chatted about that off the air after after the match was over. It's like yeah, it wasn't that by their standards, it was not anything special, but it was still great. And they're both, you know, as we said, two of the greatest that have ever lived. So that was that was kind of a funny funny thing to remark though, being like yeah, that was it was probably one of the worst ones they've ever had, and <laughs> it was still it was still very good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jay White lost his loser leaves uh, New Japan match to uh, New Japan stalwart Eddie Kingston um, <laughs> in a match that didn't really make any sense, but was a way to get Jay out of there. And uh, and he lost to an AEW guy on the way out. So uh, maybe that tells you something about the future of Jay White. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, is David Finley and Bullet? Yeah. Any or- thoughts on the end of the at the end of the switchblade there? Is David Finley in Bullet Club now? He's not teaming with Bullet Club on this upcoming tour. Okay. Uh, he's he's teaming with uh, the uh, Hantai, the main unit there. But I could see them certainly going in that direction. I just I just thought it was interesting. To, usually, as is tradition, at least for the last few, when when uh, when the old Bullet Club leader is leaving, he gets laid out by new Bullet Club leader. Um, yes. And they did not do that this time, seemingly, because I guess the current leader would now be Juice or Kenta. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the I don't know. I don't know. It's a sad state of Bullet Club. It sure seemed like they were um, uh, setting up Finley as that guy. Uh, and he he healed on the crowd like a Bullet Club guy would. Bullet Club are like some of the few true heels in New Japan. It's usually, mm-hmm. you know. Not necessarily shades of gray, but whatever. But and he went he went full, you know, F California, all this stuff. And then I looked at the uh, the lineups for the upcoming tour in Japan and he's uh, like fighting Bullet Club. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Maybe he'll join the uh, we're just we're just four guys stable or whatever. Oh, horrible name for a stable. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. All right, um, so that's New Japan, and uh, they got the Okada and Tanahashi are going to go for the tag team titles on this tour here coming up, which is uh, the New Japan Cup tour. So, um, which they hit, which is already long enough, like it stretches most of the month of March, and uh, they also managed to work in. It was going to be there were going to be like a couple of shows that had four tournament matches on them, and then like no, 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 we got to break that up. <laughs> So they've leg- they added like two more shows. <laughs> so there's only there's six meaningless tag team matches on every show on this tour and uh and also two tournament matches. But uh on one of the shows, Okada and Tanahashi are gonna go for the tag team titles, which I guess is something. Yeah, I mean <laughs> look, they they haven't been the tag champions together before, so <laughs> Factually speaking, sure. this is new <laughs> if they were to win them. Sure. All right. Uh, AEW back over a million viewers this week. Uh, pay-per-view is just a little over a week away now, which is difficult to believe. But <laughs> they have six They have six matches official for the show. A couple more um, teased, like uh, Christian and uh, Jungle, Jungle Man are not officially on the show it's not officially on the show yet but they're clearly heading that way official for the show are mjf versus uh brian danielson in a 60 minute iron man match for the aew world title it is jamie Hayter versus ruby soho versus soraya for the aew women's world championship It is the Guns versus the Acclaimed versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal versus a team yet to be named Uh, in the tag team title match four way. um, There's the TNT title match with Samoa Joseph against Wardlow. There is the Texas death match with uh, Moxley against the Hangman. And I'm missing a match. Which match am I missing? Jericho and Ricky Starks. Ah, yes. How could we forget? 
Uh, yeah. So, uh, thoughts as thoughts as AEW marches uh, towards the pay per view here. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I thought the show was it was the show was better this week. <laughs> Low bar, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't uh, didn't feel like a hot show. This sh- this pay per view as a whole, like, and this happens. I feel like with every AEW pay per view cycle, which is that uh, the shows have lackluster build but then the shows themselves are usually pretty good albeit them too long um and so everyone goes well what were we so worried about this show was great um but in this case there's a lot of stuff that i feel like i could see on just with any dynamite (laughs) um with the exception i guess of the the 60 minute match like those don't happen a lot but other than that, like it's just just a lot of rematches of stuff we've seen already. We've seen Samoa and Joe and Wardlow. We've seen uh, you know, we've seen the Moxley hangman matches, and they're they're not bad matches necessarily. Um, you know, random multi-person matches for the tag and, and women's championships. I guess uh Elite and the the spooky lore perverts is a new match. So there is that. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like a show to get that excited about because the matches are either stuff we've seen or stuff that I just I just don't feel like, uh, again, in an era where you're still asking people to plunk down forty nine ninety nine or whatever. I don't I get I guess they're really hoping that the strength of Danielson wrestling for an hour is going to sell this show. But yeah, not a not a strong lineup. So their tease to get over a million viewers this week was Tony Khan has an important announcement. And he was uh, very, very careful in the way that he worded that. He did not say huge announcement or big announcement as he has before in the past. He said it was an important announcement. And the announcement was a new reality show uh, debuting, quote unquote, sometime next month. Um, And uh, Adam Cole... Instead of uh, making the announcement himself, Tony, I think throughout the day, as word kind of leaked out that uh, the announcement was going to be the reality show and that people would see this as a disappointing announcement, Tony decided he wasn't going to get any of that on him. So he made Adam <laughs> Cole uh, go out there and make the announcement that of the reality show, uh, which uh, people don't like Adam Cole, so they were going to forgive him. But I thought that was a scummy thing to do. And uh, I also don't know how many more times you can uh, promise an announcement, get 200,000 people that didn't watch the show last week to watch and uh, not have them get mad at you. But um, this promotion has defied the odds now for well over three years. Are we confident that's why the number was up? I, I don't know what else it could be. I, I don't I I don't know. I it's hard for me. What was I, announced for this show? I mean nothing. <laughs> it was important. John Moxley and Evil Uno. <laughs> sure, but like I don't know. Again, I don't I, I have to look and see if previous promised announcements led to like them having a higher viewership. But that being Tony, said, Tony 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 is very proud of the fact that every time he's been on the show, they've done over a million viewers. He hey, made sure to work go. that in. He's Factual or not, he's taking credit for drawing drawing over a million viewers okay. before. All right, that's fair. Um, that that all being said, uh, no, I mean it was it's not an exciting announcement. There was they did cushion it a little bit because they also announced that whenever this will be, I assume they're worried about like being preempted certain weeks, so they don't want to debut it at like two a.m. after March Madness some on a Saturday whenever they whenever TBS slots them. Over the over the next month, um, that also on that same whatever the night that it premieres is always also going to be the night that Adam Cole makes his in ring return, and obviously he and Britt yeah. are going to be a big focal point. So they, I think they softened it a little bit. But that being said, even even if the announcement was just Adam Cole is making his return sometime in March, that is also not a big enough reason to pull out the we've got a big announcement i i, I, don't, I don't disagree with you that this was this was underwhelming but uh yeah it's it's it was it was just 
what it was. And hey, um, historically speaking, uh, these types of reality shows do draw an audience that don't watch wrestling. Um, and I think even the Cody Rhodes reality show drew like a higher female audience than watched Dynamite most weeks. So like there's something to this if you're trying to make the, and as, as we've talked about a million times, it's like the Bellas have the best Hall of Fame case of anyone in like the last 15 years of wrestling because of how many women watch total divas and then started watching raw and then stopped watching raw when they left <laughs> like <laughs> like the belt like so there is a potential of getting people who don't watch your show to watch these reality shows and then potentially converting some of them into weekly viewers of your wrestling show so and obviously TNT and TBS or TBS, I would say TNT. I don't think it's looking for something to follow rampage, but TBS has, has been, has been speaking recently. I've seen their reps and stuff talking about how, Hey, we've got this big audience every Wednesday and then 10 o'clock hits and they shut the show off. And how do we keep that audience? What, what, what can we get that will give these people a reason to stay on our station for longer? And more wrestling is also is generally going to be the answer to what will get wrestling fans to watch our station when the wrestling is over. The answer is usually something else about wrestling. So I think this this might work to help TBS have another show that does over 500,000 viewers. And also maybe maybe you get lucky and you start attracting an audience that doesn't currently watch the product. Hi. Totally agree that it's a gamble worth taking for everyone involved. I just, I think week one they do four hundred thousand, and then after that we'll see how much of it holds up. Oh yeah, and 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 maybe it'll be four hundred thousand every week. But uh, I I don't know about that. I don't know. Yeah, it would also be interesting, and of course we'll never hear about that until at least not until the show eventually possibly gets canceled. But like, I wonder right. what TBS wants it to do. You know, like, do they expect it? To yeah, seven hundred thousand viewers every week, and you know, from nah. ten to eleven, do they want? Like, are they? Will they be happy with three hundred and fifty thousand? Like, what's their, what's their barometer for what they consider consider like a successful audience retention after Dynamite? I guess will be interesting to see. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And I'm sure it's uh, it's not that expensive for them so mm-hmm. low risk low risk uh, potentially a uh, mid reward there uh what'd you think of mjf's promo this week where he talked about uh, his fiance dumping him <laughs> i guess that's a shoot huh brother uh that's, well, that's the word um well maybe it's because <laughs> it's a way to build a wrestling match yeah um mm-hmm. i don't i don't know it i i saw someone compare this to um to like everything in wrestling it must be compared to the joker um to to heath Heath ledger's joker where he gives like eight different reasons for why he's all messed up uh in in the dark yes um and sure so two weeks ago he was telling a story about getting oral sex in a car and getting in a car (laughs) accident and insinuating that it was uh live morgan yeah yes and now he's uh and now he's, you know, he hates Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson because uh, because Brian Danielson has a family and he's throwing and potentially is throwing it away because by getting injured wrestling while MJF is all yeah. alone. Um, so uh, I yeah. I don't I don't know. I guess people seem to like when MJF gets real loud and yells <laughs> and and makes yeah. a mean face. So uh, yeah. I di- I didn't find it particularly compelling. I didn't find their physicality afterwards particularly compelling. But you know, I think MJF is maybe a little bit underrated as a worker, um, as a, as actual wrestler. Uh, that being said, I think the sixty minute time uh, telling fans ahead of time that a match is going sixty minutes is a big gamble. I'll just say that, um, and. So we'll we'll have to see how this actually shakes out for the pay per view, but yeah, I, I I didn't like it. I just I guess that's what I'm. <laughs> that was a long winded way of saying I have not been a fan of this. It doesn't feel like a big time main event world title program, despite the fact that you have Brian Danielson, one of the most gifted performers of the last 
30 years and MJF who is still young, but is obviously very, very talented as well. The, like the feud is less than the sum of its parts, I guess. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Which think of uh, CM Punk, Phil Brooks uh, showing up to sit in the crowd at the New Japan show for the debut of Mercedes Monet. Interesting, right? Like you had to know, like you're around. He knows what wrestling fans are like. <laughs> Like and I sure and I, and I guess he was only out there during the intermission before the main show started or whatever. But like I see. you don't you don't do that if you don't want to be seen, right? Like you don't think you can be CM Punk and just walk into a crowd of wrestling fans and <laughs> sit there quietly, right? You would think, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> I guess that's so. I guess the question would be why. I mean, he's been showing his face a little bit. He was at the one of the premieres for Cocaine Bear. Um, and oh, uh, I, I, I missed that somehow. Huh. Yeah, it was him and uh, is it, is o- O'Shea Jackson, I believe is. But I forget who's what rapper's son that is. Um, might be Ice Cube's son, but. One, I think he's in the movie, but I saw them posting a picture together. But he's he's out and about. Huh. Um, so I don't know. Maybe just get <laughs> getting his face out there. Maybe it's to uh, get his name out there in his very viable Hollywood career. Um, hey, maybe guess. so. But again, I don't know. I just don't know how you could think you could go to a wrestling show and be CM Punk and not expect it to cause a stir. So it feels like, well... He wanted some attention for some reason. Yep, sure seems that way. Interesting. All right, uh, anything else you want to chat about? No, I think that uh, that hits all the the big notes here. It's like uh, I I think this WrestleMania build is going to be really interesting though, because yes, if all they have to get us excited about Cody is Paul Heyman threatening to have sex with his wife. Um, we could be in for a, a, a long, <laughs> a long few weeks here. So I I look forward to seeing what they what they drum up over the next few weeks for guess, getting us excited about these top programs. All right, till next time, everyone. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. We we will be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. I don't think I've ever had a more boring day, but, you know, I did get to play Marvel Snap on my phone and then get paid for it for about six hours, so... You know, there's that. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't doing that. I was making calls. Right. Because, you know, if you work for a bank, you're a salesperson now. (laughs) Yes. That's the job that everyone wants when they want, when they work for a bank. And that's what everyone wants their relationship with their bank to be. A yes. Constant barrage of products being hurled at you. That's what that's what people want from their banks. Everyone wants to talk to their bank more. You know, everyone wishes that they got to got to hear from their bank more often than they currently do. Everyone's always, <laughs> everyone's always saying this. <laughs> and we're just filling that void. We're just filling that role uh, <laughs> that the public has clearly requested. That doesn't seem correct. I mean, why would we be doing it otherwise? (laughs) Checkmate. (laughs) You got me again. I've broken you on the wheel of logic. (laughs) I try to keep on keeping on.